Your heart is actually two pumps that work side by side to move blood around your body. The right side of your heart pumps blood to your lungs to receive oxygen. The left side sends the oxygen-filled blood out to your body. The familiar luub-dub rhythm of your heart is very organized and controlled by a built-in electrical system, but some things can cause that electrical system to go haywire, and that can cause a condition called atrial fibrillation. If you have atrial fibrillation, the electrical signals in your heart aren't firing properly. This makes the atria, or upper chambers of your heart, quiver instead of contracting as they normally should, and it can change some of the signals to the ventricles, causing them to contract regularly. This causes a fast and irregular heart rhythm that reduces blood flow to your body. Anyone can get atrial fibrillation, but you are more likely to get it if you've had problems such as uncontrolled high blood pressure, a heart attack, heart failure, recent surgery, diabetes, lung disease, sleep apnea, thyroid problems, MS, or alcoholism. You may not have symptoms with atrial fibrillation, but if the ventricles of your heart are affected, and can't pump enough blood out to your lungs and body, it can cause symptoms such as heart palpitations or fluttering in the chest, chest pain, a feeling that you can't catch your breath, feeling tired all the time, feeling nervous or anxious, and feeling dizzy or like you want to faint. Some people with atrial fibrillation have occasional spells, this is called intermittent or paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Chronic or persistent atrial fibrillation is long-lasting. Over time, atrial fibrillation can weaken your heart and cause heart failure. It can also cause blood to pool in your heart when the atria don't contract correctly. This increases the risk that a blood clot may form and travel to your brain, causing a stroke. People with atrial fibrillation are five to seven times more likely to have a stroke than people who don't have it. Now, what triggers AF? There are many conditions that can either trigger the first episode of AF or make pre-existing AF worse. The Royal College of Emergency Medicine has created the Pirates mnemonic to make memorizing AF triggers a little easier. Here, P stand for pulmonary embolism, I for ischemia, R for respiratory disease, I for atrial enlargement or myxoma, next, T for thyroid disease, E for ethanol, and lastly, S for sepsis and sleep apnea. These are the main triggers for AF in general. Now, let's have a look at clinical signs of AF on arrival of patient in emergency room. Typical clinical signs of AF include an irregularly irregular pulse and tachycardia if it's a AF with rapid ventricular response. On arrival of patient with symptoms of AF in emergency room, he or doctors must check the pulse and get an ECG. ECG is a reliable tool to diagnose AF and here are some of the key features of AF in an electrocardiogram. Atrial fibrillation occurs when action potentials fire in a chaotic manner within the pulmonary veins or atrium. As a result, the atrial rate is extremely fast, that is about 400 to 600 beats per minute. P waves will not be visible on the ECG in patients with atrial fibrillation because the atrial rate is so fast and the action potentials produced have such a low amplitude. Because the AV node is intermittently, rather than routinely, refractory, the QRS complexes that are produced when an atrial action potential does reach the ventricles will be irregularly irregular, as there is no pattern to their frequency. This is sometimes referred to as varying RR intervals. This means an ECG showing atrial fibrillation will have no visible P waves and an irregularly irregular QRS complex. Yes, that's it. These are the ECG features of patient with atrial fibrillation in general. Also there could be variable ventricular rate and the isoelectric line is absent. Some people with atrial fibrillation can get a normal rhythm back without treatment. This happens when the heart converts on its own. If this happens to you, you may not need any other treatment, other people may need more aggressive treatment. Which treatment is right for you depends on whether your symptoms are bothersome and how long your heart has been in atrial fibrillation. Your healthcare provider will likely recommend blood thinners to reduce your risk for stroke. You may also need medication or a procedure that helps with rhythm control. Antiarrhythmic medications slow your heart's ability to send electrical signals. 
Electrical cardioversion is a procedure to shock your heart back into rhythm, using paddles placed on your chest. You will need to take blood thinning medication before electrical cardioversion to reduce the risk of having a stroke from a dislodged blood clot. Other medications can help control your heart rate. These medications include beta blockers or calcium channel blockers, which slow your heart rate, or digoxin, which slows the electrical currents between the upper and lower chambers of your heart. And if these options don't work, your provider may recommend a maze procedure or catheter ablation to change the way electrical signals move through your heart. Atrial fibrillation is one of the most common arrhythmias in clinical practice. Regular follow-ups and management plan is required to reduce the risk of having stroke and heart failure. If you have any symptoms of AF, get an emergency help right away. Thank you.